statistics that is about uh, speed versus IA. So let me take the heading now. DC motor characteristics. So in this, there are three types. Already we have seen the introduction of it, right? There is uh, torque versus IA. There is uh, the second one, which is about speed versus IA. And the third one is about uh, uh, speed versus torque. Today, in this particular lecture, I will be uh, giving you about speed and IA. Let us take that. So how do you understand this particular characteristics my dear let me tell you very clearly that uh, the load uh, the 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 motor characteristics are always very important to understand the behavior of any motor with respect to the loading condition okay so even when i am dealing with this yan and ia you should have this loading loading condition in your mind okay because even while i deal this also i will take the reference as the load right load will be the reference point in explaining this particular uh, topics even even the last one was considered with respect to the load even yan versus ia which is today lecture is also considered with respect to the loading condition and even the next one which I'll be seeing in the next particular next uh, section is also going to be uh, based on the loading let us see that okay so on this left hand side I will take uh, DC shunt motor and uh, and on the right hand side I will be taking DC series motor that's fine. So <coughs> let's go ahead and understand about how these two motors, uh, uh, speed and IA characteristics will be number two. So to make any analysis uh, or to, to analyze the variation between these two parameters, uh, I must first consider the equation that relates these two, that has uh, uh, you know both Yan and IA terms. In other way, what is the equation of speed in terms of IA? Until and unless I have that equation, I cannot do anything with respect to this particular characteristics. Let us take the equation of speed. So, equation of speed is considered to be uh, EB by phi and then we would have this as uh, EB can be replaced as you know VT minus IA RA divided by phi. So this is a you know uh, even the equa this equation I have already dealt with the uh, uh, governing equations which I have uh, mentioned in the previous lecture right. So in this particular in this particular equation so you can you'll find both Yan and IA you know and by this you can understand the variation of n with respect to ia how would be the variation how the speed changes uh, with respect to ia we're going to see that now let's say for a shunt motor let me take the schematic on this side for a shunt motor you have uh, either shunt motor or separately excited motor you'll have a similar kind of operating Characteristics. So if I take shunt, it is by default an explanation to separately excited motor also. Let us take this here that uh, this is a shunt motor. Okay, and it has got an output power which is taken in terms of uh, speed and uh, torque. Am I right or not? Now this speed variations we're going to observe with respect to this parameter which is uh, the current, the input current that is entering the armature uh, 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 and the speed are going to be you know analyzed uh, you know uh, they're, they're going to be you know put with respect to the load what happens in these two parameters how IA changes and how speed changes okay so when, whenever you take this analysis I always say to take this analysis with respect to the load right so let us take that with respect to the load as the load changes as the load changes we know that whenever in any system whether it is a you know mechanical system or an electrical system whatever the system is whether it is a you know electrical circuit or a motor or a generator when the load increases the motor or the system tends to take more input you know in the case of motor this is the input current right as the load increases let us say you take load and as it is increasing it would consume more ia so when the load increases your ia will increase 
Am I right? I hope you are observing it carefully. Now, as Ia increases in this particular equation, what will happen, my dear? This Ia Ra is going to be Ia Ra is going to be increased. What is Ia Ra? Ia Ra is the drop across the armature inside the windings of the armature. The resistance that that is offered by the armature, you know, will definitely have some voltage drop across it so that is uh, concerning to this armature winding so as the load increases your ia will increase and that will you know increase ia ra drop in the armature winding and then that based on that you are vt minus ia ra will decrease i hope you are understanding this right vt minus ia ra will decrease so numerator is decreasing are you understanding my dear so as the load increases the effects of this load in the speed equation is seen that such that this numerator is getting down now the speed value depends on the flux now am i right or not so it depends on both numerator and denominator we understood how the numerator is going to change and now we're going to understand about how the flux is going to change so when the load increases let me tell you very clearly when the load increases ia increases ia ra increases vt minus ia ra decreases but in all these processes you know your if will never change so as long as if is 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 depending on only vf divided by rf what is vf the voltage that is applied across the field winding it doesn't change unless and until you change the supply voltage vt so we are doing this characteristics analysis whatever we are carrying out is being done under under the constant supply voltage conditions am i right under constant supply voltage or operating conditions so when vt is constant as long as vt is constant your vf is going to be constant as long as vf is going to be constant your if is going to be constant and with respect to the electromagnetic principles if if is constant then the flux that is proportional to if will remain constant so in a shunt motor because flux is constant now the effect of load will increase ia but will decrease the you know <clears throat> numerator with denominator constant so you can understand that the speed is going to reduce <clears throat> So as the load increases, the speed is going to reduce. You, you are seeing the clear difference here. Am I right? Clear understanding here that uh, the flux is not going to have any influence on the motor, uh, on the speed, on the motor speed and thereby only numerator is going to pull the speed down. So if I have to make a graph between IA and N, how would I do that? I would do that like this. Am I right? So this is my ia and this is my speed all right so when you uh, know during no load this is the no load point theoretically we would find this graph starting from you know from this point which we would see that speed is getting down with respect to the load current or load as the load current ia increases you know we call this ia as armature current because it depends on the load we also call this as load current so as the load current increases the speed is getting down it theoretically you would find this particular you know the the the, the current through the armature is is zero during starting I mean during no load condition during no load theoretically we assume that the current is also no no current is flowing in the armature but when it comes to practical aspects there is a current that is about uh, you know uh, 5 to 10 percent in some articles it is even said that practically when you are operating a motor the current that is drawn by the motor is about 30 uh, percent of the full load current 
what is this full load current it is the current that is uh, you know mentioned on the nameplate details so when you take any motor you would find a nameplate detail on that right or, or like on that motor on the on the on the front side of the rear side of the motor so you would see that the voltage the rated voltage the rated current rated speed and and what is the power uh, the, the total capacity of the motor all of these things we see whatever the current we find there is a rated current and that current is also considered as the load current you know that current uh, e e under no load conditions under no load conditions practically it is observed that about 20 percent or 30 percent also the 30 uh, percent of the full load current flows through the armature i hope you are understanding my point so there are some articles which says that only five to 10%. Let us say if the full load current uh, that you have is about uh, uh, 5 amperes, then the no load current <coughs> is about 5 to 10%, which is which is about you know uh, how much it will be 10% means about 0.5, isn't it? 0.5 amperes in some other articles it is also mentioned while they do the practical observations on dc motor there is about 30 percent of the you know uh, full load current flows uh, during no load operation so 30 percent is about you know 1.5 ampere if this is uh, 5 ampere 1.5 ampere comes somewhere here so your no load current is this and what is the speed that you get here under no load? This speed we call as uh, uh, you know no load speed, speed at no load, and this is the rated value of the speed. You know that you will find on the nameplate details. This is how you understand many things out of this graph. You know as you go to the maximum loading point. You know maximum loading point you would find the speed is going down because the denominator is pulling the speed down but there is no influence of the denominator flux on the speed I hope you are understanding my my, my, my point here so this is about the speed so the variation of speed with respect to the load is not too much is not is not too high that's why we consider this particular motor for all the applications wherever we need constant speed uh, you know uh, application i hope you're getting these points right so this is a no load current full load current rated speed under no load and this is about uh, full load speed full load speed so this is how you can understand about uh, the variation of speed with respect to ia in the shunt motor let us try to analyze and understand how the same is going to be seen in the case of series motor we all know that the series motor has got uh, its structure something like this the connection diagram is like this yes okay so power output is taken as uh, uh, t uh, multiplied by speed you know torque multiplied by the speed t multiplied by omega and the current that flows through the armature is the same current that is flowing through the field and it is the same current that is coming from the supply so it is equals to if is equals to ia s okay now <coughs> what is the equation that relates here, even here also we are seeing the same relationship right n versus ia so what is the equation? I, I take uh, the equation now. Please observe that. EB divided by phi. So EB is now can be written as VT minus IA RA minus IA minus IA RSE divided by phi. I hope you are you're, you're understanding me right now coming to this uh, 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 you know this term RSC this is about the field resistance are you with me this is about the field resistance which is in series and this is about the armature resistance you have supply voltage so when you take uh, uh, and then this is the back EMF so when you take when you take voltage equilibrium equation the supply voltage VT is equals to back EMF plus IA plus uh, 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 IA multiplied by 
RSE. There should be IF here because IF is again equal to IA. I would consider that as uh, uh, same, you know, equal current I take. So uh, now I can, I can, I can further extend this equation something like this. Am I right? Yeah. Divided by phi. Yes. <clears throat> right. This is about uh, the speed equation that you have for a shunt motor. Suppose if you want to make the equation of speed for a uh, for a uh, in a compound motor then you got to take that you know long shunt or short shunt whatever that you take you know according to that you are going to have uh, another term added here so which will mention that uh, another you know winding that comes in the case of uh, uh, compound motor so let us try to understand how exactly the speed is going to change with respect to ia here so as I already said, I cannot directly say that IA is going to change here, but I can tell that as the load changes, IA changes. So <clears throat> when IA changes, what about the speed? Speed is decreasing in the case of shunt motor. Now we're going to see the similar kind of analysis here in the case of series motor. So I take the same verses here. Please listen to this very carefully. So as the load increases, you got to be a little careful here because it's, it's, it's a little complicated, right? As the load <coughs> increases, yeah, <coughs> your current will increase, yes. Then, then, then what will happen, my dear? Then IA multiplied by RA plus RAC will increase, very good. Then with the effect of that, with the effect of that, what do I get? numerator whatever i have here numerator you know this entire stuff will be reduced i hope you are understanding what i am trying to say so as the load increases ia is increasing ia multiplied by ra plus rac is increasing and then the entire numerator vt minus ia ra plus rac is going to get down that will what 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 does that do my dear that is going to pull my speed down keep this in mind <coughs> So that is going to pull my speed down. Now, can I decide about the speed variation? Yes, I, I can decide uh, about the speed variation when the flux is constant. But in the case of series motor, you, you see it very clearly that the flux in the series field winding is never constant. As the load increases, as, as, there is, as you put on some load, as you increase the load on the series motor, you cannot keep the flux constant because flux, the field winding, takes the same armature current and as the load increases ia increases if definitely is going to because same current right so the field current is rising so i cannot say that the flux is going to be constant here flux is going to be changed so now as the load increases i'm going to write the second effect now <clears throat> as the load increases your ia will increase that will increase your if that will increase your phi Okay, so what is happening, my dear? <clears throat> so as the phi increases, as the phi increases, the speed is going to get down. The speed is going to get down. See here, the speed is going to get down. I hope you're understanding my point of discussion here. As the load increases, numerator is pulling the speed down as well as denominator is also pulling the speed down. So in how many, you know, um, how many components uh, uh, are pulling the speed down? Two components. One is the numerator, the other is the denominator. So if I have to draw a graph between speed and IA now, how would I take it? Shall I take like this? So this is my IA and this is, I call this as, as I said, it is a load current or armature current or I can tell it as load as I increase the load. Okay, this is your uh, uh, no load point, no load point and then the speed is on the y-axis. Then what will happen, my dear? 
So the speed is going to be drastically reduced or pulled down by both the components, both numerator and denominator. Where, where, where does the speed starts? Where does the speed starts? I will I'll explain that later after drawing the graph. You know, because initially, initially the speed would be uh, under no load, the speed would be definitely a good speed will be there for any motor under no load because under no load you would find uh, uh, more speeds obviously for any motor so from this point the speed will go down by will be pulled down by both the components so uh, i would consider that the speed is going down hyperbolically it is going to reduce decay it is going to decay okay what will happen next? What will happen next? Does, does, it, does it go down further? Hang on, it is a point to be discussed here. Because the, the <coughs> flux that is being varied in this particular equation uh, uh, doesn't vary uh, uh, you know, uh, until the last values of current. Because as you see the current is increasing in this, Listen to this carefully. As the current is increasing, the flux is also increasing. I hope you are understanding this. As the current is increasing, the flux is increasing. So as the flux increases beyond a saturation point, the flux will, will the, the field will not respond after the saturation current that reaches in the field winding. Any electromagnet has got a limitation called saturation, right? So you can increase the flux only up to certain values of certain range of current. So let's say you are increasing this, this is let's say this is 5 ampere. The full load current is about 5 ampere and maybe at 3.5 ampere itself the flux, the field winding gets saturated or 3 ampere maybe here the field will get saturated am i right are you are you understanding my dear so you are putting on the load put putting the load on the motor as the load is being increased the flux is increasing the flux is increasing maybe at a point called 3 amperes of load current the flux doesn't change anymore because that is a point of saturation for that field winding so any field winding any electromagnet would expect or would experience uh, this saturation point, right? So as the load current is increasing above 3 amperes, definitely uh, above 3 or 2, 2.5, whatever the range that the, that the electromagnet, that the coil has actually, okay? So at this point, let us say, at this point, uh, until this point, the speed will go down by, you know, two effects we'll see, right? two effects we'll see but at this point uh, as the flux stops changing gets saturated the field field winding got saturated or gets saturated then the flux will remain constant as the flux remains constant you would not see any variation of uh, any 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 influence of this flux on the speed so until this point the speed is being uh, pulled down by two components that's why there is a drastic decay not gradual it's a drastic down okay it's like a hyperbolic function but after this you would find uh, 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 you know uh, the flux has will, will, will have no influence on the speed will have no influence on the speed so you would have a linear characteristic something like you would have a linear characteristic something like what dc motor this kind of characteristics you see because you're going to have uh, you're going to have only numerator decreasing you're going to have the effect of numerator on the speed not the denominator anymore so it almost you know resembles the characteristics during this portion is is almost uh, the characteristics of shunt motor what you find here it's a linear change not a hyperbolic change so this will be like a like like a like a straight line something like that okay are you with me my dear are you with me so this is how you got uh, the uh, understanding of uh, speed and ia the point of uh, focus in this particular in this particular series motor is uh, <coughs> under no load the current that is flowing through the 
uh, field winding, the current that is flowing through the field winding uh, under no load, actually as I said, uh, it is about 30% of the full load current or in theoretically we consider it as zero, right? So suppose theoretically if we consider that the current that, that flowing through the field winding is zero, then uh, 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 the load current is zero because under no, no load the load current theoretically if it is assumed to be zero then the flux is going to be zero then the speed is going to be infinity am i right or not the speed will be infinity very high are you understanding my dear so under no load theoretical aspects say that the current that is drawn by the motor is zero so the speed is going to be infinity but practically when you are operating this the motor would take about uh, you know uh, 5 to 10 percent or maximum about 30 percent of the full load current that would 30 percent is also a lower amount of current right so that would uh, decrease or keep the values of flux at lower range and that would keep the speed values also at very high range I hope you are understanding my point as the as the motor consumes less current during starting the flux is going to be less and then the speed is going to be very high in in this in the textbooks if you see you will you'll find a point that uh, the motor series motor consumes less armature current so thereby it produces less flux causing dangerously high speeds causing dangerously high speeds that's why it is not advisable to operate the motor especially series motor under no load so it is always encouraged to run the series motor start the series motor with some load already on it i hope you are understanding my point my dear okay so the speed is dangerously very high you know it doesn't touch actually it doesn't touch this uh, what is this uh, 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 intersect this y axis at any point of time practically speaking it doesn't touch the reason why it doesn't touch is i know i mean uh, what is that armature current doesn't get to zero in the case of any uh, series motor under practical operating conditions so it will be very high and then it goes down to a to a value that is you know and then does it does it, does the speed become zero so we said that the sp speed can be infinity when when ia is zero flux is zero the speed will be infinity that happens only under theoretical grounds so there is a possibility a theory is to say that the speed can be infinity only under theoretical conditions theoretical explanation practically speed will never be infinity but it will be very high maybe five to ten five, five to six times of the full five to six times of the no load speed i hope you are understanding my point of discussion here so what about the lowest speed of this series motor does it get to zero if the speed has to get to the speed I mean, is to get to zero the flux value should be you know infinity i hope you are understanding my dear yes or not so the speed and the flux does the flux will get to infinity if the flux has to get to infinity then the load that you are applying on the motor should be very very high then only the current IA is going to be very high, maybe infinity currents. So practically it is not possible. It is, it is even beyond uh, uh, thinking uh, that, uh, that, that, that the uh, armature current would reach to infinity. It doesn't go there. Because armature current doesn't become infinity, the flux will never go to infinity. So the speed also will never get to zero value. So what do you understand here? The speed of a series motor, the speed of a series motor, has got a wide range it will it will not touch to zero but it will have very low speeds as you increase the load and it will have very high speeds as you take at zero load i hope you're understanding my point my dear so that's why this motor is a very peculiar motor is used for many applications because of the reason that the speed is it has got wide spectrum of variation it changes from 
very dangerously high speeds to a very low speeds but not zero i hope you are understanding the point of discussion today so this is about uh, uh, dc uh, shunt motor dc series motor dc shunt motor is used for the applications uh, which are having constant speed requirements and then dc series motor is used for the applications where variation of speed is required or wide range of uh, speed variation is expected this is how you can understand about uh, dc shunt motor and dc series motor with respect to characteristics number two